Hey, Riddle here. You may have seen a couple days ago, I posted a quick reel. We're getting ready to get back into the chicken game. We built the coop this winter with um, almost 100% recycled or repurposed materials. And we just went and picked up the first chicks. And I wanna show you my brooding method because uh, there's so many of them out there on the internet and on YouTube, but this is something that is so simple and you might already have one. Are you intrigued? Okay, let me, I'm gonna show you everything I've learned. This is my third time having chickens over the years. And I watched a really great comprehensive video that a woman did about the 14 ways you can kill chicks. And it was really informative as a fresh up before I got the chicks because they are fragile little things. You know, they're coming right out. Uh, usually when you get them, they're only a day or two old. And so there's so many things that are important to know. But let me show you how uh, I'm doing it. And I'll tell you this and that and these and those. A lot of this goes along with my usual money saving and reusing methods. So here's my chicken brooder. <laughs> We have an extra bathroom that we don't use and I'm using the shower stall and it's awesome. And the reason it's awesome is I don't have to build anything and you can really control how you hang the heat lamp in regards to how warm you keep the chicks. And there's no drafts once you get this closed and the doors closed and what more do you need? And it's so easy to clean. Now what I do, I use paper towels because they're pretty sterile and twice a day, I line it with paper towels and then pull it out and then put a fresh liner in twice a day. So I'm keeping it nice and clean so my chicks don't get dirty. I don't know if you can see here, this was an old cat food watering dish and then the bubble goes on the back of it there. And what I did, I just put some chicken wire over the front reservoir and use duct tape to hold it on. And instead of buying a watering dish for the chicks, that's what I'm using and it's working out really well. And then this is just a feed container that's also for cats that we use when we go on vacation. And I did the same thing. I taped some chicken wire onto the front of the dish and it's working out really excellent. I rolled up some paper towel and stuff too for them to just kind of play in because they get kind of bored. Oh, uh, so this is something that you might not have gotten a note on with the chicks. The first week, they really don't know what's edible and what's not edible. Their mother actually teaches them that. So if you don't have a mother hen to show them and protect them, the wood chips that they will give you to put in you know, the bottom of the box, or people usually do the little shavings in the pens, these little chicks will actually eat those damn things and it will totally plug them up and kill them. And I know this for a fact because there was a moment of um, a moment that I thought, oh, this is, you know, they're pooping so much. I'm just going to put the wood chips and this is when I have them in a box. And as soon as I put those damn wood chips in the box, they started pecking away at them and trying to eat them. And I was like, oh, shit. So now I've gone to this method. You have to have something down though, and not newspaper, something that has something that they can get some grip on, because if it's a slippery surface, they can hurt a leg really easily. And when they're this young, that's no good. So the paper towels are working genius for me. And once they are 100% understanding of what's edible and what's not edible, then I'll be able to introduce the wood shavings to help with the poop. What else do we need to know? Uh, so this is just a regular deflector that I had out in my shop with a $9 heat bulb in it. And this is great because on warmer days, I can lift that up and in the nighttime, I can lower it for them. And the chicks pretty much tell you if they're hot or cold. If they're really cold, they'll all huddle together and make this funny peeping noise. But when they're comfortable, they'll be a safe distance apart and doing their own thing. Now, right now they're huddled together a little bit because they're frightened uh, because they're, you know, my presence here and talking loud like this. 
Uh, I sterilize and clean the water dish once a day. And I have the vitamins in, in, in there, of course. And I chose a medicated feed. Some people aren't into that, but I think better safe than sorry. And my chicks have already been vaccinated from the Merrick's disease. And it's important that you get chicks that are vaccinated with the Merrick's vaccination because long term, it can create a lot of problems for them, including cancer when they're not vaccinated. What else? I introduced, now this was just an instinctual, some of the chicken people out there may say I did something wrong, but into the little chick formula, I ground up some organic corn really, really fine. And I put that in, mixed it a little bit into the mix to fatten them up a little bit and give them a little more energy. Um, they will tell you that the chickens don't need to eat, um, you know, for the first three days because they have some residual yolk sac that they're feeding off of. But um, the professionals tell you, get them eating right away. Because the sooner you get them eating, the sooner they'll start growing and feathering out. And these gals are only three days old and look how healthy they are. I'll open the door and, and, and let you take a look at them. Another thing you have to be really careful of with the chicks is something called pasty butt. And two of these gals kind of seemed like they were developing it, but I was on it right away. So pasty butt is when the poop comes out of their butt, but it dries in place. And then it basically plugs them up so they can't go to the bathroom and they can die from this. So the problem is by the time you catch it, sometimes it's so hardened on them that it's really difficult to get off. And if you rip it off, you're going to literally tear them open. And so once there's a wound on a bird, all the other birds will be pecking at them and like trying to cannibalize them. So what you have to do is get a moist rag or a moist paper towel and gently, gently try to dissolve it. But if it's really dried and thick, you get just get a little um, oil with a cotton swab and put that on it generously on the clump and that will help to soften it up and then you can remove it. I've had two little pasty butts the last couple days, but for the most part, my girls are good. Look how relaxed they are. Um, I rolled up the paper towels and I had some other things in here initially because chickens get bored and when they get bored, they peck. And when they don't have enough room, they peck. They peck each other and we don't want that happening. Right now they have plenty of space in here and the perfect temperature you can tell from the way they're they're sleeping and sitting right now. And uh, so everything's good right now. And they're day three. And this is just a really easy way to set up a chicken brooder. Just use your extra shower. Now, of course, um, when I say disinfect, um, or I, when I disinfect, I use vinegar, white vinegar to disinfect. And I uh, disinfected the entire shower before I put them in there. And I do that uh, once a day when I clean it out the second time. And when I clean their water feeder, I use white vinegar, rinse it out really well. And anything else, I use white vinegar just as a precaution. And I think that's everything. You just want to be careful of any strings, anything fibrous, anything that you put in there. Again, they're not real smart and they don't know the difference between what they can eat and what they can, what they can eat, what they can eat, and they can choke on it. So I also read that in another week or so, if you want to start introducing grass to them or kind of vegetable kind of stuff, and I thought this was really smart. Don't just cut the grass and throw it in there because they can choke on it. They'll try to get like the whole string. Just like if you were put up a long worm in there and it was thin enough, they might try to eat the whole thing and it, they can choke on it because they're just little babies. Um, what you want to do with the grass is you want to cut a clump of it out of the ground and you bring the whole clump in with the dirt and put it in there. And the two advantages of putting a clump of dirt or weeds in your brooding box, number one, they will pick at the grass so they get little bite-sized pieces. 
And number two, they're getting introduced to the pathogens or the germs and bacteria and different things that they're eventually going to get exposed to once they're put outside. So this is another way to start fortifying their immune system. But that's not going to happen for another couple of weeks. I think I'm going to wait till they're about three weeks old before I introduce the soil and soil and uh, weeds, soil and grass to them. Right now, I'm just focusing on getting them fattened up and teaching them the difference of what they can eat and what they can. And uh, that's it. I think it's pretty smart. OK, if you have any questions, put it in the comment comment box and I will answer them if I can. Um, I'm sure I've forgotten lots of stuff. Um, how do I choose chickens? It's kind of important to understand, I believe, getting chickens about the same size. Because if you've got little tiny chickens and big chickens, I think you have a bigger chance of bullying. Uh, especially if you don't have a large enough pen. I also chose chickens that are mellow in nature by nature, more mellow chickens, but I was primarily focused on heavy egg layers. So I'm gonna get some, uh, I have some California whites, which lay up to 300 eggs a year. Um, I've got some Wyandots. I got a couple Rhode Island Reds because they have some of the best flavored eggs and a couple uh, Ameri Americanas. And I'm going to get two black, I can't say it, they're black an ananthothropes. Oh, I have to look at the word. I'm so sorry. But they are big black chickens and they lay, they claim, there's a record of one of them laying uh, uh, 364 eggs in a year. So, but if I could get 350 eggs, that would be fantastic. But those uh, black chickens aren't coming into the feed store for another two weeks, which is going to be a pain in the ass to have to do this all over again. But worth the time investment because of uh, food security. And there's, you probably know this already if you're looking up chickens, the crazy price of eggs, the crazy price of chicken, and also bird flu. There's a lot of bird flu spreading across the U.S. and I hope that um, we're far enough away from everything and my pen is substantial enough that we do not get visited by any funky viruses and my girls will be okay and we'll have a really secure source of protein in regard to eggs. And then any of the extra eggs, I'm going to learn how to preserve and can a bunch of eggs actually and when I feel that I have plenty of that in reserve, I will sell the rest in the front yard at a reasonable price instead of, you know, instead of the grocery store jacking us for $7 for eggs. And so that'll help the neighbors out and it will pay for chicken feed. So it's going to be a good overall system. And I will show you my pen that I'm working on. Like I said, I had someone build it for me. And um, I helped, but uh, we used almost all repurposed materials and s except for the chicken wire. And I'm still, I don't know if he made the roosting part high enough for them. That's the only flaw I see in the design. And I didn't understand that till recently when I was re-educating myself on the basics. But the rest of the pen is pretty interesting. It's pretty genius. And there's some things in it that nobody does. So my next video will be about my version of a chicken coop. Okay, bye, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. I believe how we treat each other on the streets is our ultimate reality.